We like big markets. We never try to create the next Uber. For every Uber out there, there's a thousand ideas that people don't actually want that there's no market for. Business owners, they need to hire. They need to do bookkeeping. It applies to almost all entrepreneurs. Then we try to just take our small percentage of the market, put our own spin on it, usually around customer service and good process and really valuing the customer's time. I think a lot of times you think you're your own customer when you're not. And the customers you're actually targeting are way different than you. They think different than you. They care about different things. and. We want to know all of that before we actually get into it. Welcome to the Perpetual Traffic Podcast. This is the show where we share cutting-edge strategies on acquiring leads and sales for your business through paid traffic. And I'm so excited today because we're going to learn from a monster entrepreneur. I'm here with Nathan Hirsch, who's a lifelong entrepreneur who focuses on his words, the unsexy or boring parts of entrepreneurship, things like bookkeeping and hiring. Um... He's had a, an exit, which I think is, that's the crown jewel of entrepreneurship, is when you can you can build a business that somebody else is actually willing to buy, which either means you're great or it's the law of the greater fool and you just found somebody dumber than you. But I have a feeling, Nathan, that you're great. Thank you so much for being on Perpetual Traffic. Yeah, thanks so, so much for having me. You're catching me at a crazy time. I got two foster kids staying with us for a week, a baby on the way, a basement being redone, uh, but it's tough to complain. Life's good. Yeah, nothing could be more important than perpetual traffic, though. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> When's the baby due? Uh, early August or mid-August, so we're filming oh, this man. Uh, July 6th. <laughs> yeah, you're on the goal line, aren't you? Yeah, right at the end. It's starting to get real. Yeah, do you know and do you mind sharing? Is it a boy or a girl? Uh, it is a boy. And have you named, uh, picked a name out? We have picked a name. I don't know if I'm allowed to share it on a podcast. I oh, well, then don't. Like that. Yeah, you can't <laughs> let the cat out of the bag. I don't want to get you in trouble. <laughs> but coming soon. We're excited. That's awesome, man. Good for you. I know I mentioned this to you pre-roll, but I'm going to do it again just because they're my friends and I'm obnoxious. Um, there's a, a mastermind specifically for fathers called Front Row Dads. And uh, I wish – I joined later into my journey – uh, in fatherhood, but man, what I wouldn't have given to be able to go back and just surround myself with a bunch of dudes. It's just guys that want to be better fathers and husbands. So if you're listening and you're a dad, regardless of the stage of life that you're in, go check out Front Row Dads. Shout out to John Roman. Uh, that's what we're talking about today, though. Today, Nathan's going to talk to us about his unique hiring process, uh, it, the organic marketing blueprint that scaled his business from 5K to 12 million. I'm reading that right? 12 million gross revenue. Correct. And uh, we're going to chat a little bit about your exit. But first, I'm going to sneak attack you. Are you ready to get snuck attacked? Let's do it. All right. So every guest that we invite on, before we dive deep into the nitty gritty, we ask for a nugget. And the nugget can be something ultra basic and simple in your mind, but something that might not necessarily have occurred to our listeners. So if you have just that tip, trick, hack, best practice, that quick hitter, that's going to take people and make them more efficient, better, faster marketers or business owners. What would it be? So I'm a big fan of minimum viable product. And I feel like I've talked to so many entrepreneurs over the years that, that once they get $500,000, then they'll start building, then they'll start selling. And my partner, Connor, and I were kind of the opposite. When we started drop shipping on Amazon, we tried it out with 20 orders. And if the people complained or less, left us a bad review, we would have just refunded them and moved on to something else. Same thing with free up. We offered some free hours of a VA, got feedback, made sure they liked it before we doubled down and built software with outsource school, launched a course. If they hated it, they would have just refunded them. Um, with Econ Balance, we got initial clients and gave them free bookkeeping and saw, hey, is there a market? Are these people going to actually stick around before we double down and build out this whole business? And there's been ideas that, that haven't worked throughout the years too, but we kind of get in and get out quickly. So for us, we're just big fans of putting a little money into something, seeing if there's actually a market, getting feedback from those initial customers before actually uh, going all in and hiring people and putting money in or, or whatever we're trying to do to, to build the business. Dude, that's not just a nugget. That's a it's a it's a it's a master class of thought that needs to be integrated in every CMO, director of marketing, CEO, business owner, entrepreneur. Because the 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 class that people are put through, the business school class, right, is oh, you you plan everything out, you build this major infrastructure in your mind, uh, you architect it, you have your business plan, and 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 then you go and you execute. And the problem is, is you build a thirty story building. 
and then find out that the first floor ceilings are 10 inches too low. And now I got to knock the whole damn thing down so I can raise the first floor. Like just get messy, ready, fire, aim, build as you go. I love that nugget. That's awesome, man. And I counted four successful startups. Did I get that right? Yeah, we had uh, free up. Well, yeah, we had an Amazon business that was successful in the way that it we sold twenty five million over six years. It was a major cash flow machine, but we never really sold it. Amazon became harder, and we ended up um, just dissolving it. But we have free up. We have outsource school, and then our two bookkeeping brands: Econ Balance and Accounts Balance. Yeah, dude, so you're a killer. I mean, everybody, I, 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 a broken clock can be right twice a day, as they say. And so, uh, when I see somebody who's done it over and over and over again, I get one really envious, but two just really like impressed. Uh, you obviously see the lanes. How are you choosing these opportunities? What are the what are the things? I know you said in in your bio, you're like, I like. What did you say? Unsexy or boring parts of entrepreneurship, but that can't be all. Like, how is it that you're figuring out where you're going to go next? Yeah, so we have certain criteria that that we like in a business, and we a lot of it's just brainstorming. And my partner will come over to my house and we'll sit in the backyard and throw a football around and brainstorm business ideas. But we like big markets. We never try to create the next Uber. For for every Uber out there, there's a thousand ideas that that people don't actually want that there's no market for. So I mean. Business owners, they need to hire. They need to do bookkeeping. It applies to almost all entrepreneurs. And then we try to just take our small percentage of the market, put our own spin on it, usually around customer service and good processes and really valuing the customer's time. Um, we like reoccurring revenue, customers that stick around. We don't want a business uh, selling Shopify stores where you're building it one time and then you're always chasing uh, new clients. Um, and we want something that we think will be around in 30 years. In my mind, bookkeeping will be around in 30 years. I don't know if that's true, but we, we like businesses like that where the industry just isn't always changing and we try to avoid fads and like the whatever the latest thing is. So those are just a few things we look for. And then it's kind of brainstorming it and market research. Uh, we like to talk to ideal customers. Like when we launched Ecom Balance, which is our, our monthly bookkeeping service for e-commerce sellers, we interviewed 100 e-commerce sellers and we said, hey, can you name us five competitors? What do you like about your past bookkeepers? What do you not like? Um, what softwares are you using? Stuff like that so that we actually know what we're getting into because I think a lot of times you think you're your own customer uh, when you're not. And the customers you're actually targeting are way different than you. They think different than you. They care about different things. And we want to know all of that before we actually get into it. Hey, that, so I loved everything that you just said. One thing I want to focus on specifically, because it's something I'm passionate about too, is the recurring revenue component. Uh, I have uh, a list of non-negotiables for any entity I'm involved in. And unless we're talking major high ticket, um, and even then I'm just like, nah, because traffic is so expensive. Customer acquisition is so expensive. If you're not doing something from a recurring perspective, I think you're, you're, you have a flawed model and hopefully I'm not being, you know, too aggressive with our listeners, but I would like to encourage everybody who's listening, find a way to build continuity into your business. And it's, it, it doesn't mean that that needs to be the core of your business. You know, like if you sell a house, maybe you can also get involved in, home warranty or, you know, or you could start with home services or like if you're selling the great big thing, that's okay. But then turn right back around and, you know, you're selling a, a SaaS product or a software application. Um, and, and you'll, you'll start to see that SaaS has a 30 X valuation, 30, three, zero. And it's because of the recurring revenue component. Whereas, you know, things like uh, professional services, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe. So I don't know. Writings on the wall there. I want to learn how you took free up from 5K to 12 million, which is what we're going to dive into right after this quick break.